Hi and welcome to my channel, I'm Simon and today I am back with my June book haul. So all the books that I bought myself, that pile there, and all the books that have been sent by publishers, that pile there. They're almost equal this month. I thought last month was a big bumper month for books but apparently this month is even more so and it's not even over. I am recording this a little bit before the end of the month and that is because as this goes live I'll probably be waiting at the airport to uh, fly to Belfast as the start of my 16 weeks of travel over the summer. I am back for three days at the beginning of August so then any books that have come since today will be part of, and I've planned this video already, I said planned it, it's unplannable because I don't know what will be in the parcels, but I'm planning on doing an unedited opening of all the parcels that I got while I was away for a month for my July book haul because that's what we plus I may well buy a few books along the way in bookshops as I go around uh, Northern Ireland, Scotland and the north of England over the next six weeks. So anyway there's that um, I'm going to get cracking because there's loads of books to talk about so we're going to start with books from publishers as always and first up we have I think this, do you pronounce this ow or or? Could you let me know in the comments below if I've said that wrong? It's by Becky Manawatu and I was sent this from, well, I was asked if I would like this from the lovely folk at Scribe and I said yes because um, this is all about um, indigenous, uh, well, it's from an indigenous voice in New Zealand and I love books set in Australia, but I don't read that much from New Zealand. And it says, um, ow is a verb to cry, howl, groan, wail or bawl, an interjection, an expression of astonishment or distress. And it says, Tokiri was born into sorrow. Al can be heard in the sound of the sea he loves and hates and in the music he draws out of the guitar that was his father's. It spills out of the gang violence that killed his father and sent his mother into hiding and the shame he feels about abandoning his eight-year-old brother to a violent home. And then it's about his brother who is braver than he looks and we follow the two trajectories of their life, I believe. I think this sounds incredible. Um, and yeah, it's been a bestseller in New Zealand. I'm really, really intrigued for it. And uh, I love that cover. I'm going to pop these books in piles down there because these could topple at any minute. Then I have a book that I really basically wanted because of the cover and liked it on Instagram. And then Matt at Fourth Estate very kindly sent me this. This is the book of Goose by Yu Yun Lee, who is an author I've really, really wanted to read. And apparently this is a stunning novel of girlhood, friendship and obsession. This is the story of Agnes and Fabien. And um, I think it takes place in France. And yeah, I really want to read books about friendship and the difficult nature of friendship because friendship is something that I find really like not tricky I like to think that I have friends but you never really know how anyone really feels about you also like I just think friendships are such important relationships but also they can go wrong over the smallest thing and I think sometimes the ties are stronger than family and sometimes they're obviously not so yeah I just find it fascinating so really really looking forward to that one then when I was in Vintage, um, I went into the offices to film a video with Damon Galbert for the Sky Arts Book Club Extra, which will be going live later on in July. And um, they let me pick some books off the shelves. And one of them actually was given to me by um, the lovely Izzy, who is uh, Damon's publicist. And she said this was her favourite book of last year. And I couldn't say no to that, could I? It's Simone de Beauvier's um, the Inseparables. I've always wanted to read her work. I don't know anything about it. And so I'm going to go into it a little bit blind. But yeah, finally, I'm going to try Simone de Beauvier. Do you say, how do you say it? Beauvier. That doesn't sound right to me. Anyway, I'm sure somebody will tell me in the contents down below. Um, I do like the fact they've put in um, the introduction this introduction contains plot spoilers because that's something that really really pees me off in introductions and I should say it's translated from the French by Lauren Elkin um, and the introduction is by Deborah Levy who I really really adore writing wise so yeah there we go there's that one um I grabbed Portrait of an Unknown Lady by Maria Gainzer, um, which is translated by, they should really put it on the cover. It's translated from Spanish by Thomas Bunstead. As I've been looking at this for a while, um, mum has given me the prompt this month to read, um, this month, this is not gonna happen this month, but I'm planning on reading all of me and mum's prompts sort of over the next six months instead of over the whole year. Anyway, um, 
the prompt was to read something art based and this is based around a great art theft so uh, yeah i'm really looking forward to that i have just spotted the translation um is on the back or the translator is on the back i don't think that's good enough it really really should be on the front so yeah but i want to read a lot more translated fiction this year and um, this is one that i would like to head to in due course i also got amy and lan by sadie jones i have enjoyed two of sadie jones novels a lot and one was the uninvited guest which is all about ghosts and i think i read the one was it her debut that was all about um, war? Uh, the Outcast, or was it Small Wars? Ooh, that's a good point. And I still haven't read Fallout or The Snakes, so I've got more to go. But um, I saw Grace talking about this over at GK Reads, and um, it intrigued me. Also, that cover is so autumnal. I think I'm going to save it for then. Um, I think, it's again, it's a book about friendship and about two families that I think grow up where the, these friends are almost actually like siblings, and we follow on what goes on from there. So it could be an autumn of friendship it reads who can say i have mentioned this book on the channel already but this is the new um proof of the night ship by jess kidd that you can see on the side and um, this i'm very excited about because i don't know if you can see but there is a lovely quote from me there so um, yeah i shall be reading this over the forthcoming weeks so i shall talk about you talk about you more i shall talk about it more in my july wrap-up because i don't think there's going to be a june wrap-up as my reading's still been a bit all over the place and um, I won't have read everything by June, but I won't have the books to do a whole wrap up together. So I think I'm just going to possibly skip it or maybe do it as a bonus video or something. I don't know. Then we have a book that I need to read because um, I've been asked if I will give it a quote. And that is Let's Talk by uh, Nihal, I can't speak today, Nihal Arthanaika. And um, I have been on his Radio 5 show. He's fantastic at conversations in this whole book. Sorry, there's the um, title and the author. Um, this whole book is all about fantastic conversations and how to have conversations and how to have difficult conversations as well as delightful ones. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really, really excited for this. I got to chat to him for the... Um, W, well, the Orion showcase earlier this year about it a little bit when it hadn't quite been finished. And now I just think I'm going to get a lot out of this because I have conversations with a lot of people as part of my job. So I think that will be really, really good to get more tips from one of the best. Then we have Seven Empty Houses by Samantha, uh, Samantha sorry, Schweblin. Um, and this is short stories. I can't work out if I've read any of Samantha Schweblin's books or not but um again um it's i think they're quite quirky and quite unusual and i want to read a lot more short stories over the rest of this year as well i've been thinking a lot about sort of what i want from my reading going forward and i might do a cuppa and a catch-up video about that um that will go live before july when i think my video is going to be a bit more sporadic you're definitely going to get one a week um or two a week sorry but possibly occasionally three sometimes not we shall see. Anyway, that's not about this book. That's just about the channel. So I shall move on. Um, but yeah, Argentinian and translated by, because it doesn't say on the cover again, uh, Megan McDowell from, uh, from what is, is it Argentinian? Or is it Spanish that they speak out there? I don't know. I should know more and I don't. Translated, just says translated, doesn't say what from. So there we go. Then a book that I'm so excited about. Um, this is Briefly A Delicious Life by Nell Stevens. And the folk at Big said, would you like one? I was like, yes, please. Um, I've since seen, who have I seen talk about this? I feel like I've seen Emma Drinking My Michelle talk about it and possibly Jen. Um, so yeah, Jen Campbell. So this is basically the tale of a ghost who falls in love, uh, a female ghost, who I'm not quite sure how she died, but I think it was not great. And she haunts this one particular place where this family turn up, and I think they might be quite well known. Yeah, Chopin. Um, so Frederick Chopin, George Sand and her children travel to a monastery in Mallorca. And I think George Sand's dressed like a man and this ghost falls in love with this real woman and so it's quite a sapphic story but it's also about the perils of women at that time and being different and yeah I just very 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 excited for that book indeed as I am Boyfriends by Michael Pedersen which I was hoping I was going to get sent a copy of um, I would have chased last one if not this is all about friendship um, between men and actually I think this is 
less common, although I've got another one on the stack of books that I bought myself, but this is less commonly spoken about, I think, friendship between men. And I think the most times I've read about it, it tends to be written by women writing about friendship between men. I'm thinking, of course, of Hany and Agahara. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really intrigued with this. And it's got great, um, got great uh, blurb and stuff from everybody. And I think it might be non-fiction. Um, so yeah, and I haven't read very much non-fiction this year and that's something I'd like to read a lot more of. Then we have The Cherry Robbers by Sarai Walker and I think this cover is so gorgeous. Also, it looks like it could be a country and western slightly. I'm not sure if it is, but it says Irish Chapel and her five elegant sisters, all of them heiresses to the Chapel Firearms Fortune, live cloistered in a lavish Victorian mansion. Neglected by both a distant workaholic father and a mentally troubled mother who believes their home is haunted by the victims of chapel weapons, the sisters long to escape the eerie fairy tale of their childhood and move forward into the modern world. But for young women of 1950s Connecticut, the only way out is marriage. Yet it soon becomes clear that for the Chapel sisters, marriage equals death. So that sounds great, doesn't it? So um, yeah, it isn't a country in Western at all, but sounds brilliant. And it's got praise. Oh no, it says, I thought this was a quote on the back from Amy Schumer, but it said, if Amy Schumer turned her subversive feminist sketches into a novel, dark on the inside, but coated with a glossy palatable sheen, it would probably look a lot like Dialand. Oh, so Dialand is a previous book by this author. Moving on, Simon, you don't know what you're talking about. You're overwhelmed before you travel. And um, then the folk at Shribner sent me Tomorrow I Become a Woman by A1O's Odafen. And I've seen this about on a few um, Instagram channels, but actually weirdly more in the libraries that I've been traveling around. I've seen it sort of on every display shelf and not know much about it. So I was delighted when it arrived, but it says when Gozi and Obianju meet in August, 1978, it's nothing short of fate. He's the perfect man, charismatic, handsome, Christian, and most importantly, Igbo. He reminds her of her beloved uncle Ikena, her mother's brother who disappeared fighting in the civil war that devastated Nigeria less than a decade before. I find anything about Nigerian, Nigerian history really fascinating. Um, it is why when Gozi asks her to marry him within months of meeting, she says yes, despite her lingering and uncertain feelings for Akin, a man her mother would never accept as his tribe fought on the other side of the war. Akin makes her feel heard, understood, intelligent. Gozi makes her heart flutter. So oh, it says loosely based on the stories of a real woman known to the author. Wow, that sounds incredible. I think it's also about um, mothers and daughters too. So yeah, that one's one to uh, look out for. I am doing an event with the wonderful Juno Dawson about her first book for adults, well, first fiction book for adults, which is Her Majesty's Royal Coven, HMRC. And I'm so excited about reading this witchy romp I think it's going to be I think it's going to be absolutely brilliant and I can't wait to speak to Gina about it in I think it's on July the 20th in Manchester if there's a link I shall put it down below if I remember if I don't I'm sure I'll be sharing it on social media and stuff and if I don't put a note of all of the books in this I'm really really sorry rewind grab a cup of tea and press pause every so often sorry I'm just trying to get as much content ready for you before I go and sometimes that means the more finer details of posts, etc., can be a little bit um, here, there, and everywhere. But anyway, really, really, really excited for this one. As I am one of my um, most anticipated books this year, one I found out about <laughs> it instantly became Mercury Pictures Presents by Anthony Mara. A Constellation of Vital Phenomenon is one of my favourite books of all time ever. I love Anthony. I got to interview him when I went out to a booktopia for the book podcast that sadly is no more books on the nightstand which I absolutely used to adore I still adore Anna Michael and follow them and everything um but yeah I'm so excited about this I assume it's going to be about film I don't know I don't want to know too much that's one thing with some of my favorite like writers when they've got a new book out I don't want to know too much about it I just want to go into it a little bit blind and see where it takes me so um, yeah can't wait to see where Anthony takes me with that one then we have one of the most amazing proofs Ever that's so beautiful I don't actually want to read this edition of it also it's too heavy for all the travel so I'll probably get to it more likely in October when it's out anyway and um, but it's Our Share of Night by Mariana Enriquez and I think what I'm going to do is because I feel guilty that I haven't read that I'm not going to be reading this before it comes out and I'm very lucky to get this early proof I'm going to head to um 
her short story collections beforehand. So uh, yeah, very, very, very much looking forward to this. It's also signed, another reason that I don't want to touch it. I don't know what it's about at all, um, but it's a big chunker and it takes place in the 80s and I think has some kind of demonic thing going on in it. And all on the back it says is, his father could find what was lost. His father knew when someone was going to die. His father had taught him about the dead who rode in on the wind, the dead travel fast. Intrigued, I can't stop doing that. So cool, so, so, so cool. Um, another book that I'm really, really excited about, but I think I want to read the author's previous novel first, is Infamous by Lex Crouch here, Reputation, which you can see on the back. Um, I think is very Bridgerton, but even naughtier possibly. Um, and I think Infamous is going to be just the same thing. It actually says on the back, book smart meets Bridgerton. And um, yeah, I love Lex Croucher. I love their channel. I think they're fantastic. And um, yeah, I'm really, really keen to read this. Sorry, I had to pop, I spotted out the corner of my eye, a book that I hadn't included. Anyway, I'm really, really excited for this, but I feel like I have to read Reputation first. And also Reputation is a big chunk that I've had on my shelves for ages. And um, I think it would be perfect for traveling. So um, yeah, but very, very, very excited and delighted to have that one. Then the books that I realized I hadn't put in this pile. So it's out of order because I took them in size order because because, 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 because of the wonderful things he does, um, is Other Names for Love by Tamor Sumro. And this I mentioned in my uh, previous video, my mid-year freak out tag when I was talking about a new favourite author, but not because I've read him yet, but just because I've been chatting with him on Instagram and he is an absolute treat. And this is um, One Boy's Life-Changing Summer in Rural Pakistan, A Hypnotic Story of Fathers, Sons and the Consequences of Desire. Very excited to read this very soon. Then we have a 2023 release, which is Mame by Jessica George. And I don't know what this is about, so let's find out together. It's Meet Maddie. To her mostly absent mum, she's mum, to the woman of the family. To her dad, she's his carer, even though he hardly recognises her. To her friend, she's the one who still lives at home, who never puts herself first. It's time to become the woman she wants to be. So yeah, I'm intrigued. Oh, I see there's like text and stuff in here. Um, so that's quite an interesting way of uh, from that. So intrigued, can't believe 2023 books are already arriving, mad. Then we have, with this slightly saucy cover, um, Cells by Gavin McRae, and this is out in November. I've realised I haven't said on all these books throughout. I'm so sorry. Um, Anyway, it's um, Sales Memoirs for My Mother, or oh, sorry, Memories for My Mother. And I think this is just various different memories that obviously the author has about his mother and um, of his life. So I'm really, really intrigued um, to how it's going to be. And apparently Gavin, it says here, Gavin is spending the quarantine in a small flat in South Dublin with his 80-year-old mother, whose mind is slow, oh God, that makes me want to cry, whose mind is slowly slipping away. He's lived most of his life Adult, sorry, most of his adult life abroad and has returned home to care for and to write a novel, but he finds that all he can write about is her. Oh my God, that makes me really, really want to cry. So um, yeah, we have that one. Moving on. Um, I'm going to be doing a video on the books that I think might make the Booker Prize long list. I haven't really delved or done much around the Booker in the last few years, but the international book has made me more excited about just like the whole Booker brand, I guess, full stop, especially this year, because I thought the long list was incredible, without having read all of it. Um, but yeah, anyway, Lessons, I think, could be on there. It might not make my predictions list. You'll have to wait and find out. It's Ian McEwan's latest. I used to love Ian McEwan. I have not loved his more recent books as much. Will this be a return to form? I don't know. I don't know what it's about. Well, that does say contingency through the prism of one man's lifetime. So maybe, oh, it's the story of a lifetime. So the lifetime of one man. And I do like those kind of books where you get like a whole character's life in one book. So we shall see. Bit of a chunkster as well, that one. Then we have Venomous Lump Sucker by Ned Buman, which I saw Kieran uh, predict this could be on the Booker long list this year. I would not be surprised. I believe it's a thriller about um, some rare uh, sort of animal. Um, so it's kind of a climate crisis thriller, which I think is probably very necessary, but also makes me nervous. I'm in that weird position with climate crisis where I, I want to know more, but I also am terrified about knowing more, if you know what I mean. And that's just me being 100% honest about everything. Sometimes I, I do live in denial. Anyway, um, I wouldn't be surprised if this was on the list because he's been on the list before. I don't know if it was with Boxbeat or his debut or another one. Um, so yeah, so wouldn't be surprised. I do really, really love this cover. Also, he is the son of um, the owner, Nicola 
Bowman, who owns Persephone, um, he's her son. So that's a fascinating fact for you, a bookish fact. And then last but not least from publishers is Tales from the Fatherland by Ben Ferguson, Two Dads, One Adoption and the Meaning of Parenthood. So I think this is going to be a really interesting memoir, um, yeah, about queer families and um, adoption. So yeah, we've got that. Now onto the books that I bought myself. First of all, this tiny, tiny treat. I know it's going to be a treat. It's Jen Ashworth, The Badger. And this is from Russian Books, who I also have a Benjamin Myers uh, short book from. And um, I don't know anything about it. I'm really, really excited for it. I love Jen Ashworth's writing and I wanted to support an indie. So we have that. Then I have Dick Fight Island. Yes the book that does what it says on the tin and um yeah I'm really really intrigued by this I saw this on books and bow or is it bow and books um channel I'm really bad with any alliterative channels which is odd when I have an alliterative name and I love alliterative things um but anyway um I saw this it sounded really really good fun and this is going to be a treat for when I get back from traveling a little bit of saucy fun and um, then this weekend just gone I've been back in uh Riagach on the Red Hill which is one of my favorite places in the whole world I may well do a reading vlog of it um, I've recorded quite a lot of stuff, but actually there's no me talking in it because I just didn't want to film myself at all. I'm, I'm feeling quite like that a lot anyway at the moment, but but that weekend I really didn't want to because I was escaping everything. So if a reading vlog where I sort of introduce it and then you just have lots of beautiful sounds. I've also done, I recorded a read with me, um, 45 minutes, which has just got sheep sparring, birds singing, rain falling, the sun coming out. It's yeah, just nature really uh, coming that I recorded there. Anyway, we went into uh, McConcliffe, which is the nearest uh, sort of town, and went to a second-hand bookshop where I got Tales of the City. I have this edition, but I have it with a white and black writing, and all the other ones have black and white writing, and I'm a completist, and it was £1.50, so these are some of my favourite books on earth ever by Arma said more if you haven't read them yet you must get to them they are a story of lots of different characters in san francisco and it just those books have meant the world to me throughout my life so there we go and then i got margaret atwood's poems 1965 to 1975 an old virago edition and uh, yeah I love that cover. It's so retro, but also so now in a weird way. I don't know if you agree. You may well not, but that's what I think anyway. So uh, yeah, I'd quite like that as sort of a t-shirt maybe, like, yeah, but bigger. Um, anyway, I did have a Margaret, oh no. I did have a Margaret Atwood. <laughs> Let's ignore that. They're all fine. Don't worry about them. They didn't knock you over. So that's one benefit. Anyway, um, just put that part separate. Anyway, um, I did have a Margaret Atwood sweatshirt. So I don't know where it's gone. I picked up Women Talking by Miriam Taves. I have wanted to read her for ages. I almost picked this up when I was doing a vlog that might not see the light of day where I was doing like reading all of my, well, reading some books about women or books by my favourite women whilst also seeing some of my favourite women and going to the Women Prize and stuff. If you'd like to see that vlog, let me know in the comments down below and I will make that happen. It might mean that vlogs are therefore a little bit behind for a while, but that's no bad thing because it gives me time to edit. Anyway, this um, is all about uh, the, well, it says between 2005 and 2009 in a remote Mennonite colony, over 100 girls and women were raped by what many thought were ghosts or demons. Their accounts were dismissed as wild female imagination. Of course, it wasn't their imagination that did happen them. They weren't allowed to speak though. So Miriam Taylor's right of what those women would say if they could talk, hence women talking. Then we have, and I don't know why, I thought the publisher was going to send me this and they never did, but anyway it doesn't matter because I bought it for myself. And I should say I bought these in a wonderful independent bookshop, which I'm not going to even try and say the name of in Welsh, but we'll try and remember to link their website down below. They don't have any social media or anything. Um, I'm assuming they have a website. I'll check anyway, if I remember. Um, but if not, Google bookshops in McConcliffe and you'll find it. But this book, anyway, is Richard Flanagan's uh, The Living Sea of Waking Dreams. And I thought this didn't sound very me, which is odd because I absolutely loved his Booker Prize winning. I can see the cover. I can't remember the title. What is wrong with me today? Honestly, I think the fact that I haven't packed it or anything is preying on my mind, but also giving me that big overwhelm at all at the same time. Um, 
The Narrow Road to the Deep North, sorry. Um, and I wanted, when I read that, I loved it so much. It's one of my favourite books of that year, and I want to read everything he's written. I've got some of his previous books, but just haven't got around to it. But this sounded amazing. Anna's aged mother is dying if her three children would just allow it. Forced by the pity, their pity to stay alive, subjected to increasingly desperate me medical interventions, she turns her focus to her hospital window, through which she escapes into visions of horror and delight. When Anna's finger vanishes and a few months later her knee disappears, Anna too feels the pull of the window. She begins to see that all around her others are similarly vanishing but no one else notices. All Anna can do is keep her mother alive but the window keeps opening wider, taking Anna and the reader ever deeper into an eerily beautiful novel about hope, love and orange-bellied parrots. Sounds great, why has this not been on my radar sooner? Shame on me. I talked about um books about male friendship and this one um is one that I'm desperate to get to it is cheer the fuck up by Jack Rook and this is about his time going to uni uh, where he was able to kind of be uh, sexually free as a queer man although also slightly closeted and um where his roommate was a um, straight man who had really serious depression and um it's how their friendship developed and I think it sounds like it's going to be absolutely gorgeous um, Sunset by Jesse Cave was an odd pick, and I won't lie, it was from a supermarket, um, so it was a bit of a random pick, but it says Ruth and Hannah are sisters, bonded by love and friendship, they're perplexingly different characters, and it's how one summer changes forever when something really bad happens between them. Um, and I really like books about friendship, but I also really like books about siblings, and I thought this would be a really, really interesting one. I don't know if this is one where one of the siblings dies or not. I mean, I know there was a book about that that came out last year. Anyway, then I picked up UB Mother um, when I was in foils in London. I'm doing these all out of order, but I'm doing them in size order um, by Meg Mason um, after, um, well, I just wanted to get her next book. So um, yeah, after Sorrow and Bliss, so I did. I'm not sure how I feel about that cover of Spilt Milk. It looks a little bit, um, it makes me do a bit of in my but we'll see. Anyway, this is about um, a woman called Abby who gets pregnant by a man who is visiting the UK when she's there. She flies out hoping that maybe something can sort of ignite if she brings her child, but it doesn't. And then she ends up moving in either next door to or in the flat of an older woman who she befriends, but she tells a really big lie at the beginning and it's what follows on from there. I mentioned this in a previous haul because I bought the Fitzcarraldo edition of it. However, I then bought the American edition because I do really, really like them. This is Drive Your Plough Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tokarczuk, I want to say, but I don't know if that's right and I really feel bad if I get it wrong. Um, but yeah, I think this is going to be the most me book of Olga's, so I think it's going to be the one that I want to start with and I do. I just really love, 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 love this cover so um, yeah, we shall see we shall see when i get around to that one um i have not read sabrina and karina but i know i'm gonna love it the short story collection by callie fajardo and steen but i kept seeing people talking about women of light which is um her debut novel and so i had to get it, even though i don't know anything about it so let's We'll move swiftly on. Um, I have been wanting to read Sharks in the Time of Saviours for ages by Kawai Strong Washburn, but I really hated the UK edition and then saw this edition of it and thought, oh my goodness, I have to have it. And so I got it. Um, I ordered quite a lot of books from um, other countries, um, generally through readings in Australia, but if not, I'll find like the publisher's website over in America or Canada or wherever and see if they'll ship over here. Um, but yeah, I really, really wanted to get to it eventually. And just, I love that cover so much. And I've got, since Swimming with Sharks on my 40th birthday, I have a new sort of found respect and admiration and interest in them. And I think they feature in this book, which is about a young boy who falls in the sea and should drown, but doesn't. So his parents believe he may have some kind of godly gifts, which he may or may not have. And I think it's based on Hawaiian folklore, possibly. So um, yeah, and I love that kind of stuff. So there we have that one. I bought me and my mum a copy of this. Marble by the author was one of mum's favourite books of last year, and I still haven't read it and must. This is um, Amali Smith's latest book, Threadripper. And it looks like it's really like interesting format, quite different um, and mixes, I think, um, women's histories and fact and fiction and all those kind of things. So it sounds a little bit different. I feel like, did Ben 
of Doom Antidote read it and really like it. I'm not sure. I feel like maybe. Um, I've also mentioned this on the channel before, but I really like the American edition, so ordered it. It's um, Black Cross is really good as well, actually, for American editions. In fact, I think that's where I got this and Sharks and the Time Saviors. I don't know how they're going to be now that they've been bought by Waterstones. We'll have to wait and see, but they're still uh, shipping books into or international books free or books internationally free. Um, and so, yeah. That's where I got this from. But this is The Odyssey by Laura Williams. Lots of you recommended this when I said I wanted a book that was a bit nasty, a bit dark, and a bit twisty. And um, so I'm looking forward to heading to that one. I just think that cover is so stunning. I could not, not, although probably I should have waited until I've actually read the book to see if I like it or not. Another um, book that I had imported is Patricia Wants to Cuddle by Samantha Allen. This sounds bonkers. It's a queer story um of well it says well i guess bigfoot lesbian rom-com mystery horror is my new favorite genre lily wachowski says who um co-created the matrix so and sense eight so there we are but um yeah that's kind of what it's about as you can tell from the cover so i think that's gonna be really fab i picked this up in a charity shop for a pound um and i have a proof so i'll be reading that at some point and then keeping this pristine because it's a signed special edition of a terrible kindness by joe browning Rowe, which has had a lot of praise this year it looks i think at the life of a boy who work, who lives his father is an undertaker and i think it's based on the tragedy that happened in uh, where was it? It was the, yeah, the landslide. It's October 1966, and a landslide at a coal mine has buried a school, Aberfan. And so we follow on from there. Um, and I think it's going to be quite emotionally wrought, but one that I do want to get to. So, yeah, we have that. Although, that again, that feels like an autumnal edition of a book, um, even though it came out in January. Um, I picked up, speaking of signed copies, um, when I was in Halifax to go and see Jessie Ware, which was amazing. And that was also part of the women's themed or sort of like favourite women, women's, I don't know, I don't know what to call that vlog, um, that has never come out. Um, but yeah, when I was in Halifax to see Jessie Ware, I went to the book corner, how could I not, and got myself Benjamin Myers, uh, well, a signed copy of Benjamin Myers, The Perfect Golden Circle. I think this is going to be a real summary. There's something about crop circles that makes me feel like that. And this is a book about two men who secretly go out and make crop circles and looks at friendship between men and um, yeah, and nature and very, very excited for this. The aforementioned Jen Ashworth really raved about it. That Boner by Atesha Moshveg. I had to buy myself this. It's a book that I've been very excited for. I feel like a bit of a, um, a Tessa Stan failure because I read, um, oh my God, what's wrong with me? Why can I not remember the title of books today? Wow. If you're new here, I am normally much better than this. I mean, I go off on lots of tangents. Of it. Sorry, I read Eileen and really, really, really loved that and had the pleasure of interviewing Atessa when she came to the UK for when she was on the Booker shortlist um, and then read My Year of Rest and Relaxation and absolutely loved it. I still haven't read McGlue and I still haven't read... Um, Death in Her Hands, it's over on my shelves, that's one looking over there. But um, yeah, this one sounds really, really different. And I feel like this could be a book that I head to quite soon. Although I don't, I kind of want to pack proofs or books I've got second copies of for the travel over the next sort of three months, because that way I can sort of deposit books and then reward myself for every few that I get rid of for getting a new one. If I, well, that's what I'm thinking about doing. I'm getting all stressed about traveling again then. So anyway, there we go. That's that one. I just, just heard amazing things. And then I think, did I get all of these? Nearly all of these I got from, oh, oh no, that's a proof. Oh my goodness. So I've done them out of order. Here's a proof that I've randomly put with some of the books that I shouldn't. Um, I was talking about uh, big books and wanting to do a summer of stonkers in a previous video. And I mentioned The Eighth Life by Nino Haratishvili. Um, and this is their follow-up novel, My Soul Twin, which is much shorter. Um, I could head to this first instead, but I do really, really want to get to that big book at some point. So naughty me for not including it with those proofs earlier but I mentioned how I get books internationally from be it the publishers themselves be it from Blackwells but also from one of my favorite bookshops that I've sadly never been to in real life but feel like I know through social media and that is readings in Australia and I picked up several books of theirs I'm trying to get a few every month one is 
Bad Art Mother by Edwina Preston and this I picked up because mum had said that she wanted to me, as I mentioned before, to read a book based on art for a prompt as one of my prompts that we've given each other, 12 prompts that we've given each other this year and then when I saw Bad Art Mother I thought well that's just like my mum gave me a prompt art mentioned but this is about a woman who's a poet and her so this couple offered to have her son in exchange for giving her money so that she can write and she decides to do it and we follow on from there. I also got this edition of um, An Exciting and Vivid Inner Life by Paul Della Rosa. I got sent in the UK proof but I just think that is stunning. Also Paul is an Australian writer. I've read these short stories. It's a very queer short story collection. Kind of um, Jalen over at um, this is where it gets like get confused with the bees. The bar and the bookcase? Where's the bookcase and the bar? I think it's the bar and the bookcase. I'm so sorry, Jaden. I'm so sorry as well to books and bow or bows and books. It's just the bees. I don't know what it is about it. The the double B. It just gets me. Anyway, um Jaden had compared it to a Tessa Marshberg, and I can kind of see why. I think Jaden loved it a bit more than I did, but I did very much enjoy it. And this is a book that I read in June, so I probably won't talk about. So maybe I should do a June and July wrap up, maybe. We'll see. We'll see how many books I read in July. I'm trying, I'm hoping that I'm going to read loads because I'm going to be travelling, but that hasn't proved to be the case so far this year, but I'm also trying not to put pressure on myself, so let's move on. Then, this book looks amazing. It's The Woman in the Library by Solari Gentile, and this is a crime novel set, you guessed it, in a library where a group of authors are doing, I think, a writing workshop together, and then someone is murdered, Obviously one of them did it and we follow on from that. I think this is going to be a perfect autumnal curl up in front of the fire and just read this in like one go. That is my plan for that book. And then we have Michelle de Kretzer's Scary Monsters. And I don't know if I'm going to do any themed reading vlogs over the forthcoming weeks because I'm going to be traveling about a lot and therefore... I kind of want to read a lot more by whim to get back in my reading swing because I feel like I've sort of lost it a little bit. Anyway, um, I will at some point be doing the reading vlogs where different um, writers get to recommend me books and this is one that Damon Gal got recommended of three. Um, I've also got three recommendations from Hany Anagahara and I've got three recommendations from Mini Driver. So yeah, I'll be reading these at some point. And the reason that the price is on the cover is because that could be the cover or could that be the cover? Which is it? And Damon Galbert said this was amazing. Did I say it was Scary Monsters by Michelle de Kratzer? Um, if I didn't, you can see it, it's there. And I just love this, and I love it a lot more than the UK edition. So that's why I've got it, and there it is. Um, I believe I saw Natalie, who is back, um, talking about it on her channel. And the reason it's written in these two parts to kind of almost discombobulate the reader a bit is because that's the experience of people who come to a country that's new to them for the first time when they come to live here. And that's what the whole book is about. I also got Sally Piper's Bone Memories for no other reason than the wonderful, oh my goodness, why? What is going on with me and names? You know, and you can see an author, Holly Ringland, there we go. I had to think of unicorns and that instantly gets me because me and Holly have a chat that we call the stream of unicorn nonsense or something anyway um but she really raved about it i really trust her taste and so um yeah i picked that one up i don't know anything about it and last but not least another um supermarket random purchase was idol by louise o'neill i think this is going to be really really summery although i saw after having bought it i saw jen campbell talking about it and she was saying like it's really gripping but really quite difficult in some of the subject matter and stuff so yeah it's going to be interesting. Also an author that I could read while I am in Northern Ireland, although she's from Ireland. So anyway, there we go. So there we are. That is my June book haul. It took me a lot longer than I expected, so I don't know how I have time to do all the videos that I want to do today before I go, but I really need to pack. That's so helped me because also I just feel like I've got that I can sort them all out and put them away, possibly film that, make a video about it, we'll see. And then I will feel a bit more like everything's ready for me to go. I don't know why. I don't know why it felt quite cleansing that, although there's a big empty shelf there now where um, all of these were. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. As ever, if you have read any of these and you didn't like them, hold off telling me for that until I have read them, because then you can tell me what you like, what's and all, frankly. Um, but beforehand, I'm excited about all of these books. 
even though I might not be around them for a while, um, and I would like to keep it that way. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you're all doing super duper well. Let me know what you hauled in June book-wise, and um, I will speak to you all very, very soon, hopefully. Bye.